So the cam phasers are rattling. Hey YouTube, my name is Kenny. Thank you for checking out the channel. So we're back again with a video of the 2018 F-150. It has been a while since I've done one of these videos with the truck. However, so I do have a couple little things that I am gonna to try to get fixed in this video. Well, actually one big thing. It has nothing to do with any of the parts, any of the customizations that I did with the truck. It has everything to do with a poorly designed cam phaser from Ford. So what we're gonna do is just dig into this motor, get everything taken out, in this first video and hopefully get everything reinstalled in the next video along with all the torque specs and everything. So by the end of this video series, you will be comfortable doing this by yourself and knowing if it's something you can and cannot tackle. That being said, I am not a Ford tech. I'm just a regular guy who works on some things, got my powder coating stuff and sandblasting stuff. I do work on my four wheelers and I've expanded since I've been doing things with the truck. So if you're not comfortable messing with the motor or digging into a motor and understanding timing and timing marks and timing chains and torque specs and all that, don't really do this yourself. And if, if you do do this yourself, do it at your own risk. I'm not the one who's telling you to do it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in here and show you the process that I'm gonna be doing. I am gonna follow a couple of Ford Tech videos and I do have the service manual that I'm gonna be getting all the torque specs out of to make sure we get this thing back to where it should be. And by the end of this series, the truck is gonna be able to be started, quiet, and still head down the road like it used to. So before we get far in this video, I wanted to show the tools that I ended up using to be able to get this project going. So over here, you can pick your variety of ratchet sets. You only have to use a few. So we have the three A's, we have the quarter inch, and then we have just deep sockets. I have a couple missing out of here that I've used for different projects, but I use the whole kit. I'm thinking you'll be using a 10, a 12, a 13, a 15, and I think an 18, but all these kits have those same things in them. So it's nothing crazy. Just make sure you get a decent kit that has a variety of sockets in it. This one just came from Sears. If you have these things already, you're already on the up and up. This is just an extra box in that I had that had an extension on it. And this is gonna be able to help reach some clamps that are kind of far away. The, you do utilize the seven millimeter that's gonna be in here, but that's it for that. Down here, as far as box ends, we use an 8, a 10, and a 17, an extension, and then we have our normal just ratchets here, and then we have our flex there. This actually is an inch pound torque wrench. Here we have a cheap breaker bar that I have or a pry bar that I got from Walmart. All these things are going to be linked down here in the description section. We have a foot-pound torque wrench that I use, a magnet for those dropped bolts, some vice channel locks that I use, flathead, a little tool that I use to help get those Christmas trees out, I have a hammer, I have some pliers, vice grips. This was a specialty tool that I ended up ordering from Amazon. For this year, you will need this part number here. 303-1655 and it also comes with this socket all going to be linked down in the description this is a i think it's a half inch this is what you're going to be using to put your new hardware and lock your cams lock your cams new hardware for your cam phasers up here is the motocraft rtv sealant that they recommend so i decided to use what they recommend instead of experimenting with something else i didn't want to figure out if it leaked the one thing that we do not have here is the harmonic puller. So overall, I am wanting to say that's about it. I mean, we did use zip ties and we had a couple things like a razor blade, but for the most part, that's all the tools you need. You don't need really anything specially except for those cam locking tools and that harmonic puller. But we can go ahead and get the video rolling now. All right, first, let's go ahead and get that hood popped. I did go ahead and put me a LED down here just so that I'll be able to have some light. I do have it rigged up. We're just going to make sure it's ultra bright underneath here so we can see everything. I do have a small little step stool that's going to take me up to my lifted truck to where I need to be able to bend over because this is going to be pretty back breaking. Ford says it's about a 10 hour job. I'm going to see about how far I can get in one day and that's going to be including time that it's going to be taken to document for you all. Right now we're 940 and we're going to see how long it takes to get this thing apart. All right, so we're under the vehicle and what I did was just use a flathead screwdriver. This clamp kind of opens up and when I went underneath this one corner here and popped it forward like right there, rest of it kind of came loose and it took its way around. Then I just grabbed this, 
pulled it straight back right here twist pull back right here flat head bottom clamp comes off bottom clamp comes off and this right here is going to be relieved okay so we got those three things off the bottom all right so now since we're at the bottom down there we are draining the coolant system it is going to take a little bit of while for this to go as you see how slow it's coming through it is about four gallons it's going to be coming out a little bit of war give or take but let's get underneath there and see exactly what we need to be hooking up to so here we are underneath here as you see that's the plug right there the red plug and you'll twist that and that will unscrew this is on the driver's side so right underneath the headlight and fog light you come underneath here at this angle here and you'll go right there and see that red plug make sure you put your hose on there first mine is nothing but a three ace gas hose it's got that little bend in it and then it comes down and it will drain right into the bucket take some time but it'll get done as well as we took the cap off here to get things flowing all right on to the next part let's go ahead up top and get some more things taken off as this is draining so we're just going to get this intake cover lid out of here You just want to unplug your sensor back here. Push pull. So next we're going to get our shield off. 10 millimeters here. Now my cloth is just sitting there because I did put a soundproof mat up there. I just wanted to also see if it could help, help with any of the rattling noise that I was having. And just to keep up with these, just put them back down here on there. So on the back side of this tube, <clears throat> we have Christmas trees. And we're gonna use our Christmas tree and door panel tool. See if we can get them up without tearing them up too bad. And if we do, we just do. Up. So what we did do is just take a couple zip ties and then pull that last tube about the way. And we're going to focus on getting these hoses over here out. So basically, they have a different combinations of how they lock in. So for example, this one here, you push these two clips in, push it back, as far as it'll go, hose should wiggle right off the top. Each one of these has its own little design of how they come off. But just make sure you try to take them off easily so you don't break all your clips and have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new ones. So like this one spreads and pushes. A little bit more taxing on the fingers. So I'm gonna just use this pry tool just to kind of help me in the front. But just let the tool and the clip do the work. So now it's slid out. That here is that. I said just throw it over here so we're just gonna toss it over out the way so the next thing we're doing is getting this breather hose right here off push that tab back so allow this hose to this all right tab slid back and then you're able to push it down and lift the front up a little bit so that's loose so this one you push down on it a little push your thumb over i know you can't see it but it's unlatched now let's see if we can just get it to lift up off of there 
So it does lift off there with no problem. It just takes a little bit of muscle behind it. So do not get too discouraged with it. Just keep trying and don't worry about the clamp. If the clamp is open, good steady pressure up, we'll be able to get this removed. So next down in here, what we need to do after we got that plug off and this off, we come down here and there is a seven millimeter hose clamp there that has to come loose. We already loosened it up and we have to go down I went down through the side right here, and if you come right through there, you'll see the other seven millimeter. You're actually going to be able to reach in there and access that with an extension on a seven millimeter. So that should be no problem, and that's a better angle of what we're looking for. So now we have both of those clamps disconnected. It wasn't too much of a challenge, but there are two bolts that you have to take off right here, and both are 10 millimeter. And if you're not careful, you can break that little clamp. So I did use a box in wrench to be able to get that on. And we just replaced the screws right now. And this should allow us to get the big bulky part of that duct work out. Everything is disconnected for the most part. And that's going to pull right out and we keep it all together. Just remember right there, that big spout, there is a hose that goes onto that one. It's the twist, connect, or disconnect that we took off in the very beginning underneath the motor. So when you get underneath, you take that quick connect off. That's one of the three things that we took off from underneath. This is where it disconnects from that spout up there. So you twist it, comes right out, all this goes away. Now we have a little bit more room to wiggle, and I'm going to attempt to see if I can get that big one out, but I think we're gonna be stuck in there on another piece of tubing. So we're gonna to have to go back towards the center and get that main spout off the intake out, and then we'll be able to get that one out. And get these hoses out of my way. They're wanting to sit here and jump around, but Unfortunately, the spout is covering that up, so we're just going to move angles so you can see a little bit better. I did go ahead and take my 7 millimeter and loosen up my clamps. So that big spout is the other one that's underneath. It's the one that has the clip, not a hose clamp, but it's that clip that goes in down there, and it's all disconnected. So once we're able to pull that off of the intake, you make sure that you keep open to your clamps and make sure none of that stuff breaks loose. And if you push it in there, you should be able to kind of maneuver that hose up out. There is that plug that you need to disconnect. Make sure you don't destroy that. And there is a Christmas tree right there, and that's going to pull out the back. And then this hose should be on its way out. As you see, I'm working that boot around, making sure we get cleared. And now that we're cleared of it, you come out and towards the front of the cab or towards the back of the motor bay. And it should be coming up out of there. number two sections out and that's that clip that I was telling you about earlier go ahead and put your hose clamp back on there so you don't lose it push it on one of the key things is putting a lot of the hardware back into the holes that you took them off or keeping them together in the actual parts that we're dealing with now that we got that one out of the way the long one that comes across to the other side it was the one under the passenger side fog light that we disconnect it with the seven millimeter clamp. So I'm thinking that that's gonna be able to come right up out of there now. So three hoses came out or three pieces of tube came out. Two of them went to the turbo and one went to the intake. All out and all clear. Now what we're gonna do is just start disconnecting the rest of these hoses from the intake, because that intake is going to have to come off first. So we're going to disconnect those quick connect clamps. None of them broke or none of them break if you take your time. So we should be good to go with this. We're going to get them off the left side and off the right side. 
Typically, there's just a jumper breather hose that goes there, but I do have my oil catch can, and that's what I'm going to be disconnecting is the two hoses that connect onto there. As well as on the front of the intake, there is another connector that goes. So as you see, for the most part, you can't get the wires twisted. The way they're wrapped up in the loom, they only can reach exactly what they're going to be plugged into. So Ford did do a good job with that. So we got our pry tool, we got everything. We're getting more and more disconnected, which is good. There's a lot of parts that come off here, guys. So just hold on, take your time. You'll be able to get this done as well. Tuck those two wires. I'm tucking the wires off my oil catch can off to the corner. Just make sure they're out of the way as best as possible because you're going to need all this area to be exposed. In the very back, I'm pointing that there is a bolt that could come out or a sensor to disconnect. I didn't want to move any of the sensors or anything like that because some of the things are set to different tolerances. So what we're going to do is just make sure we get all the Christmas trees up when you use that pry tool and we're going to do the best we can not to break any. I did break some and I used zip size to re-hold my wires back into those locations. However, we're just going to do our best to get around here and get all the wires disconnected from the throttle body. So we're going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. And in that very back on the right hand side, there is like a little retainer that holds a rubber boot, which holds on all those hoses that I just pulled up. Now we'll just be able to have direct access with 10 millimeter bolts to be able to get the, I'm wanting to say 10 bolts out the top of the to get the eight bolts at the top of the throttle body. So when the throttle body is all off, that's a huge step and they're all in there. So these will not come out. They're retained in and everything holds well. I'm showing you the sensor right there that I did not have to disconnect. But in the very back, there is a Christmas tree that was held on that we kind of destroyed, but that's fine. The Christmas trees are not the biggest concerns. On the other side, there's blue gaskets that we did buy new replacements for that we can worry about getting those installed as we go. But you don't want to drop anything down into your intake, so I am plugging up these holes, and we're going to get all of them plugged up and keep moving along. Those are the holes that I disconnected. There was a plug in the back and a quick-release hose clamp. We're going to get that off to the driver's side and sitting there. Next, we're going to work on just disconnecting our valve covers. All the wirings first, so we're going to lift up our white plugs as we see fit, pull those off, and I decided not to disconnect my coil packs, I just went ahead and used the 10 millimeter, no, the actual eight millimeter bolts and disconnected the three on each side, being that it's a V6, there's six total, three on each side. I'm gonna pull those out and lay those to the side. And as I stated, the way Ford has everything loomed, the plugs, you will know exactly where the plugs go once they get there. And some of the plugs had two different, like two wires. And one of the big things was the plugs were not interchangeable. You couldn't even get the plugs mixed up in the different areas. So we're just going to keep disconnecting things and going on around, pulling the Christmas trees up. And then we're going to take our ratchet or our impact and disconnect all of the 10 millimeter bolts and then start working our way around it with a pry bar and trying to lift it up. Do not force this too much or put too much tension on one side. The valve cover itself is just held on with tension. There are rubber gaskets that go through each spark plug channel and those really, really secure it on there. So you just got to kind of work with it and work with it. So it took me about five minutes to get it off after doing some prying. As you see, I went to the bigger tool because the small one wasn't helping me get enough leverage. We're going to work our way around without destroying things and just take your time.
Yes, we're still trying. We're almost there. I'm just double checking, making sure all my bolts are out. Failing to make sure there's nothing in the bag because I'm like, this thing should be coming up. So that just lets you know the kind of force that it's held on. I mean, it's held on really good. And you see how far I'm digging in the back. Working on the lifted truck is a bit of a challenge. So a regular step stool didn't have me up high enough. Next day, the belly was sore. If you look right there in the middle above the oil fill spout, you'll see the one starting to come up. Now, rest of them are off to the races. Now that gasket is going to get replaced. The dipstick does go through there and I am. So realistically, this side cover was a lot more challenging to get off. Basically, if you can look right here, extra tube in a way, extra stuff in a way. So what made it a little bit more challenging was we had to get the high pressure fuel pump out. That basically, I'm going to have all the tools linked at the very end, but we had to take the two bolts out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten millimeters. Now, these two here were underneath that, which is underneath here. So it's all connected. So that made it a little bit more of a challenge to squeeze onto that area and get that. These ones came off with no problem. This one here was back in the corner and I didn't see it. Thank goodness I didn't force it, but that one is way back there in that corner, as you can see there. Then you had to take out the high pressure fuel pump, which is right there. You had to take 17 millimeters to take that off. I just kind of, it's a um, hard line, so I kind of just flex it up a little bit to be able to get the valve cover off so I didn't have to disconnect any of that crazy stuff back to there. But it was a lot more challenging just because of lack of space than the other one was. So we have both sides off, the top off. No huge problem there. Now we're just going to get this cluster of hoses and everything off there. And then, yeah, we'll be working on getting these phasers off and getting the new chain put on. So from here out, the view is going to kind of change a bit because there's no way I can hold the camera and work on it because we're down in here. One of the things you do need is some good height because I have a lifted truck and I'm just on a little step stool. And man, you're down in there. But hoses we've taken the hose right here off squeeze clamp and we folded that hose to be the one that's folded up over here tucked in also there is one that went here it's tucked in over here on this side this one has come off it's tucked in back behind it this one here has come off it's tucked in right here as well as that one it's just down and loose for right now so we can go ahead and get this black plastic assembly off here all that's going to come off and once we get that off we'll look at getting the serpentine belt off and the pulleys and we're getting close so all that black assembly is off exposing a lot more now you're going to make sure you get that o-ring or that gasket right there off there's one at the first hole that i pointed at and one at the second one as well so just make sure you don't leave those on there and we're going to replace those with new. They came with the parts list, but we're going to show you how many bolts was in this main section. In the main section, there was one, two, one, two, three. So you have one in the middle, four and five. Now there's a subsection that goes off to the right of it and there's two bolts in it. So seven, eight millimeters total are in this whole contraption. Those are the two right there. So five and two is seven. So I'm, playing so I'm playing games with my battery. So the battery wants to go in and out, but what we did was go ahead and take the pulley off, which was three 10 millimeter bolts right there. It was easier to do it with the serpentine belt already on. So with the belt already on and under tension and the crank would not spin, I did break those loose with a 10 millimeter and then backed them on off. Next thing I did was put a 15 millimeter on the tensioner pulley. And as you see, if you push down there, it allowed for tension. You can use your other hand then at that time to pull the serpentine belt off. We're going to be replacing the fuel pump or the water pump, I'm sorry, 
as we reassemble this, but for right now, we're heading down the right path. Now we gotta get all these other little parts off. So we're gonna get all these eight millimeters out around. Yeah, we're gonna go around the water pump and we're gonna just use the impact and take them all out. I'm wanting to say there's eight or nine of them. We will know exactly how many there are when we get it laid down, but I'm wanting to say nine off the top of my head. And then after we get them all disconnected, we're gonna take all the hardware out and then use our pry tool, go right in that little area that I show you right there and prop it down. So right now we're gonna look and see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bolts that come off. And then you can also use that tool to get the gasket off. The gasket kind of wants to stay. Water pumps disconnected. Now what we're ready to do is take a look to get the two 10 millimeters off to hold on the idler pulley or the tensioner pulley, 13 for the idler pulley and two 15s to be able to get the alternator off. So all that's all. Idler pulley is gone right here. The tensioner pulley, we have the alternator loose and everything and the bolts all out. So the alternator should just prop right off. But one of the things I was saying is that at the very top, that bolt that comes off of it is a 15 millimeter, but the stud requires a seven millimeter also to come out. Once you get both of those out on the very top, you're good to get that alternator pushed all the way off. And then we're just down to this little pump assembly here and we're down to our crank. Now we do have our crank tool on there. As you see, I have an extended piece of pole on there because it doesn't want it, to, it's, it's down in there far and it's hard to get good leverage, but that pipe really helps us get that disconnected and pop loose. So I got the harmonic puller on there. And as you see, we just used it and removed the crank pulley. I gotta get it off there now. One hand is makes a challenge, but the pulley goes back and it grabs onto these little teeth back here, these little lips. And then you put that rod in there and it just shoves it off and then it actually allows you then to get this belt right here off and get the, get the tool back off of it. So we'll just get that pulley off of there and out of the way then we will be able to disconnect this bracket here and take this off and we should be getting pretty close to being done once we get that bracket right there off but let's just go ahead and see if we can push that through Couple 10 millimeters and this should be off. Couple 10 millimeters and this right here should be off as well. Sorry, I'm messing up with a little bit of the footage. So all that's off. Now we just gotta get this plug out. We've already disconnected, broke half the Christmas trees up through, and we're just gonna 
bring that wire up here with everything else. And battery wire. I think at this point, I think we got it left to do is just uh, get this off. Start getting the bolts out of it. All right, everyone. So on the very, very bottom of that case, there is one nut that I did not show me getting to. It is a 10 millimeter and it's pretty much a pain in the butt to get to. It kind of holds the battery cable up against it. So it is kind of like a retainer. So there's a stud that can come out that I took out and there is a nut that goes on the stud. So once those two come out, if there's nothing else left that's going to catch this um this cover as you pull it out but until you get that on you're going to get all the regular bolts out and when you go to pull it's going to be stuck on that so make sure you take that 10 millimeter out it's on the very bottom and if you can't see it which is going to be a pain to get to i got this one from underneath but i didn't get any footage of it because camera wasn't doing right so just want to let you all know moving forward there is a 10 millimeter on the very bottom right underneath that plug that we disconnected on the front case so we can all be clear. I did decide to go ahead and go underneath to show you all the 10 millimeter I'm talking about. That 10 millimeter is right here. It's right where you would see that zip tie going through and it goes through and it actually holds that piece of plastic. So that's attached to it. So just make sure, I didn't put my bolt back through. I thought it wasn't necessary. It's just holding that battery cable. So I did use a zip tie right there, but I wanted to show you all exactly where it was at if you look from underneath here. So underneath, this is what you're gonna see. All right, so I'm getting exhausted and my footage is lacking. So here we are first. We have the cover pried forward. Everything's out, all the bolts and stuff are out. We're gonna make our way of trying to get it up and out of there here in a second. Then we're just gonna be focusing on what we have going on inside of this motor. All right, so we're down deep in the motor. <laughs> we got the chain showing, we got the cover off down there on the floor. Uh, we're gonna get this thing rotated over to where it should be. Work on getting the tensioners off, the chains off, the phasers off and then we'll just start putting stuff back together so you know what time is it all right we're at about 312 so we're about where i wanted it to be i'm not sure if i can i could probably get this together tonight if i did not get footage of it uh we'll, we'll, we'll figure out where that's going to go so we're still looking good okay we're going to we already got these all broken loose so they're pretty hand tight for the most part, the chain on this side is already out and ready to come off. Same thing for the other side. We're going to go ahead and get the chain, the tensioners, the guides all off. We're going to change the phasers and then come back when I'm getting the torque down. So here we are once again. We have our new chain on and we have our slides back on. We're about to put our tensioner. So what I did was just use some channel locks, squeeze that in and put a small penny nail in there, as you see. It's just holding it from coming all the way out. But timing marks down here on the bottom, you want that dot there that you see to be between those two copper, the two copper ones, the two bronze looking ones. Then we'll come around and you'll have the dot here on the exhaust, dot here on the intake. This side is set. We just need to put our tensioner back in there. And then once we get that done, we're gonna put tension back on this side and then we're good to go. All right, with all that back on, we did put the new hardware in. I'm just gonna reach down here and pull my nail out and put tension back on. Tension. So we're ready to roll. All right, so new phasers on. We have them torqued down and everything. If you have a torque wrench that does degrees, that's great. If you don't, you can still figure it out or get really, really close. So 
What we're going to do is actually just close this video up or get to a conclusion of this video. I am going to sit down and go over the torque specs with you all of how to torque, of what to torque everything down to. So we make sure we get this all in there correctly. I just want to make sure everyone knows that it's something you can do at home. I have torqued down and started reassembling and it has been from 12 o'clock, I mean from 10 o'clock and it's roughly four. So that's been six hours. I could probably finish this up today. Who knows? I may, I may not. I'm just going to move along as it goes, but we're going to get those torque specs in. All right, everyone. So we're down to the wire, getting this truck reassembled. So we got everything taken apart. I did start talking about it a little bit, but what I want to do is make sure I get you all the torque specs so you get this thing assembled correctly and you don't have any issues down the road with things falling apart or stripping out any of your bolts. So we're going to get really in detail with it in the next about 20 minutes. It's going to be all torque specs and pictures. So let's just get rolling, have a seat, and hopefully this helps you get your truck back together. All right, so let's get the first parts on, phasers. So the cam phasers, as you see right here through Ford, what they tell you to do is take out the old bolts. As you see, there's two bolts here, one, two, four total, two on each side. And we'll throw those bolts in the trash. So they're going in the garbage. Once we then do the same thing with the other side, we're gonna take those four bolts out, throw them in the trash, those two bolts out on the other side, throw them in the trash. Then we're gonna be reinstalling the new units. So there's four steps to this, one, two, three, four. So once the new cam phasers are installed, we will then torque them down to 30 foot pounds. Then we're gonna loosen them up all the way from 12 o'clock back around to 12 o'clock. Then we're gonna retighten them to 18 foot pounds. Then we're gonna go 150 degrees. So 150 degrees is your one to three, that's 90 degrees. Then we need another 60. So then we go from one again to two. That 60 and that 90 is 150 degrees. We got our cam phasers reinstalled. Off to the chains, slides, and the tensioners, those should be relatively easy. All right, so let's get those tensioners installed now. We are not going to throw these away. We're just going to reuse them. You can replace them. I didn't have an issue with mine, but some people just say replace it all while you're in there. I didn't. I replaced a good bit of stuff, but not this. So the tensioners, only thing I used was a set of channel locks, not a bench clamp, but you could use a bench clamp or press. And you're just going to squeeze the tensioner back in and they show that there's a little pin that you can use to hold its retention. I just used a finished nail and it was not a problem at all for me. Put the nail in there and then when I pulled it out, it gave perfect tension and there was no problem. However, the same sequence for the left hand and for the right hand, just one subtle difference. Once we get these installed, there is on the driver's side a longer shafted bolt that's going to be required so that the slide or the guide is able to sit on that. So on this side, you'll have that slide there with a the regular bolt. And on the other side, you will not have that slide there. And on the other side, you will not have that slide there. It's just two regular bolts. These two bolts do get torqued down to 89 inch pounds. That's it, 89 inch pounds. So now we have both of the tensioners installed and we have them down to 89. We're not gonna pull tension yet because we need to make sure we get our slides in there as they should be and those torqued down because there's four bolts on those as well. So the right hand timing slide on both sets is what we're gonna be torquing down to 89 inch pounds once again. So this one here is highlighted in blue, or the teal. Purple bolt here, here. And then there's one more that goes this way on the other side. And it's gonna be a bolt here and a bolt here. Both, or all four of those bolts go down to 89 inch pounds. Next thing we're gonna do is get our timing marks where they should be so we know everything is good. And here's a look at what our timing marks should be. On the top of the cams, you will have a timing mark here and a timing mark there. So the dots are arrows. And then it will sit in the middle of the chain link that's colored. So I think this one's gonna be yellow and this one's gonna be white or vice versa. So this one sits in the middle here and this one sits in the middle there. And then down on the very bottom, there are two copper colored links and so each link has two teeth on it. So there's gonna be four kind of teeth. This one sits in the middle of that. So right here, 
it will have one full link on this side, one full link on this side, to where these will have one link and the dots splitting the middle, and this one is in the middle of the two links. So make sure you have it just like that. Then you can pull your pin out, release the tension, and that side is good. You wanna do the driver's side first because it's offset back, and then you'll do the passenger side, and then you should be good to go. So now we are gonna be installing that whole front cover since we have our timing where we should. So we have our timing marks good, we have our phasers torqued down, we have our slides and everything good, and we have tension on it. Just make sure we understand that if we do rotate the motor, we rotate it clockwise and not counterclockwise because that can kind of loosen the tension upon the slides and then create issues with things jumping or getting off timing. But with getting the front installed, what we're gonna do is just show you the full surface that needs to be cleaned. So the front surface to here and all this yellow needs to be clean, but do not overlook one, two, three, four, these little separate areas that need to be cleaned off really good because they're gonna need this RTV. I got the Motocraft RTV and they're gonna need that put around and we're gonna show exactly where that goes here in a second. But this is on the front cover side and then we'll go down to the motor side. So the motor side, you have the same thing, but this is one of those, one, two, three, four. And you wanna get as much as that old RTV and everything off. I did just put some acetone on a rag, went around and cleaned it, used some brake cleaner, went around and cleaned it, make sure it was nice and good on both ends before I started applying the RTV. So here's where the RTV goes. It will just be the dotted line that you see it go around everything as well as that circle here, circle here, circle here, circle here, and then around the whole thing. Make sure when you are lining it, you put it on the inside of the bolts, not on the outside. If you put it on the outside, it's gonna leak. We don't want that. We don't wanna to have to go back and take all this off once we find out oil's everywhere. So the cover is going to go on and we're gonna put a few bolts in and we're gonna to torque those down to 27 inch pounds, as you'll see, just to kind of hold the cover on. One of the other things you just need to be aware of is before you get that all on there, right here is where that electronic plug is gonna come through. Make sure that's cleaned. Make sure you put a little lubrication on that so that the shaft is able to slide on there, the cover is able to slide on without any problems. But we're gonna put five or six bolts in there just to hold it in place and we're gonna to torque those down to 27. Then we're gonna go around and get rest of our bolts torqued down, which is gonna be 24 of them. There are at various lengths, a couple different lengths. Just make sure they do not overthread or underthread. You can get the idea. If the hole's too deep, when you put the bolt directly up on there, it's gonna immediately bottom out. If it's too long, you're gonna have this much hanging out the back, so you're able to figure that out really easily. But right, here's our diagram. We're gonna kinda go cross section with it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And these bolts, the pattern that they're gonna go down is to two-stage pattern. They're gonna go down to 177 inch pounds. And then after that, we're gonna to go to 45 degrees, which is at, one, at midnight, and we're gonna go over to 130. So 12 to 130. Here's also just showing, as I stated, that lubrication, you wanna lube that up to make sure that it slides over there nice and easy and there's no real big problems. And you just wanna visualize that that plug is sitting there as it should, and you don't have any complications with that. So we're here just saying, just take a look at it and make sure it looks good. It is at the bottom of the motor, so it is a little bit challenging, but do the best you can. Then the last thing we're gonna do, since we have that cover back on, is you're gonna just push that wire loom that battery wire back onto that little stud that's at the bottom and that's just going to hold it there and retain it then what you're going to do is you can put that eight that 10 millimeter back on i did not choose to put that 10 millimeter back millimeter back on it's just retaining that loom so what i did was put a zip tie through it so just in case in the future i have to mess with this i do not have to hassle with that bolt i don't really know if you want to recommend it but that's literally just a stud with that bolt just to retain that and i was not going to go through that again it was a little bit of a pain it was the biggest pain Kind of all the bolts get out, but off to the next part. Now on to the next part, we are going to get our pulleys reinstalled that put tension on that alternator belt and the water pump belt. So we have the accessory pulleys that are going on. Both of those go down to 18 foot pounds. Be careful to make sure we understand that we're listening to foot pounds versus inch pounds. 
18 foot pounds are what these are going to go down to. So you have your two that go onto the tensioner pulley and one that goes onto the idler pulley. That's it for that. These bolts were not recommended to be thrown away. You can't reuse these, so it's exactly what we did. So we reuse these and put them back in there. Next thing we're gonna do is go off to the other side and that plug, so we don't forget it, we're gonna go ahead and plug that plug in and then go up the side and put our four Christmas trees back in. One, two, three, and four down there. I didn't stress too much over this. I did break these two and they are the Christmas trees with the zip ties. I decided to just go ahead and zip tie here through because I didn't have those Christmas trees on hand. So we have that wire right there where it should be so it does not get destroyed. Next we're going to do is that this is the, I think in-house or the in-cab like regulator of the fluid. So what we do is this is the one that we push through that rubber bracket. We're gonna put it back through the rubber bracket, put the rubber back in place where it should be. Then there's three bolts, one, two, and three. And according to the manual, we're gonna to torque those down to 62 inch pounds. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, what you can do is take the inch pounds and divide it by 12 and it should give you foot pounds. But now you're talking about being at like five foot pounds, which really isn't much, which I understand because I work on ATVs and it's only like seven foot pounds to go on anything like aluminum in many cases. You don't go too high on those things. So we're going to go ahead and get those torque back down and make sure we go ahead and put our plug in so we don't overlook this later on and wonder why there's issues. Then our generator stud, which is our alternator, we took the stud out that comes out with a seven millimeter. That seven millimeter needs to go back in and be at 71 inch pounds. So 71 inch pounds is what we're gonna put that stud back in. Once we get that stud back in, we can put our alternator back in as it should be and put the two bolts that came out of it and those two bolts are gonna go down to 35 foot pounds. So we're moving along with this. Now it's off to the next part. What we're gonna be doing is getting the main crank on there. So on the front, we're moving along. We gotta get the crank pulley back on. We gotta get the water pump. We gotta get the inlet to the water pump and the thermostat housing, the water pump pulley. We're narrowing it down. And we have torque specs to go along with it all. So now it's time to get that crank reinstalled, the pulley. We pulled that pulley off with the harmonic pulley earlier. What we're gonna do is just use some tools that we should have at home to be able to get this back on. And I don't think it really needs anything crazy. So after you've gotten the timing and all that stuff back on, you had the crank bolt in to be able to do that, to kind of be able to adjust and wiggle it. We're gonna take that crank bolt back out, and what we're gonna do is put the crank on. But first, before we do that, we're gonna lubricate the inside of the crank seal and that little collar that goes inside of it. It says you need a specialty tool. I didn't have to use one. I got my crank started on there because it is slightly beveled. And then I just tapped it a couple times with my hammer to get it on. A rubber mallet just really wouldn't do it. I tapped it a couple times with my hammer, got the OEM, the original bolt in there, turned it a couple, make sure it got a couple teeth in there, started, and then I just turned it and it just slowly pulled itself back into position. When I felt that it was getting a little tight, I did take it out and replace that bolt. I do, you do not reuse this bolt, but I did take it out and replace that and I didn't have to do that. It goes into a three part sequence. So what we're gonna do is torque it down to 37 foot pounds, 37 foot pounds. Then we're gonna go 90 degrees. So 90 degrees is going to take us from midnight to three o'clock, three o'clock. Then we can come back straight up and down and then we're gonna go 60 degrees, which should be to two o'clock mark. So the total is gonna be 150 degrees and we're gonna just drop it off in two stages, 90 and 60. Next, what we're gonna do is get our air conditioner belt reinstalled on there, which shouldn't be too, too difficult. But one of the things that we're gonna do once we get the air conditioner belt on there is make sure it's clean, make sure the pulley is grease free. And what we're gonna do is just scroll down to getting it installed. This is taking it off and we're gonna put it back on. So first, feed it back in behind the other pulley and then put the front on. That might make it a little bit easier so it's not so stretched. Then what we're gonna do is take something as simple as a zip tie and come across the very front. Maybe two, two, two zip ties may help you a little bit more. Start the teeth on to where they should be. So all the teeth lined up where it should be, put a zip tie there, put a second zip tie there. Then you're going to put your ratchet on the bolt here and then turn your motor over 180 degrees. You gotta make sure your cam tools at the tops are all out. I mean, those can be out anyways because we have our timing on. But once you turn that over to 180 degrees, your belt should be on there. Then we'll just double check and take a look at it again to make sure it's all under 360. And then you will just confirm that all of the teeth are lining up inside the pulleys as they should be and it's not overlapping or messed up. 
Now let's keep getting everything else on so we can get this side of it, the front of it done. Water pump, coolant pump, we're there. We're ready to get this one installed. I did put a new one on my truck being at 65,000 miles or 62,000 miles in that area. I just didn't want to have to go through this again. It wasn't the ones that, you know, I just wanted to replace because I was in there. But when you get yours, just make sure that you put a new gasket on there. If you don't replace it, put a new gasket on there and lubricate that O-ring in this one side right here. That O-ring needs to be lubricated really well. And that gasket needs to be a new one that you're going to place on. Then you're going to go around there and you're going to go to 89 inch pounds and 45 degrees on all of the nine bolts that are in it. So there are nine bolts here. I'm going to go crisscross pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 89 inch pounds, 45 degrees, which puts you out on the clock, 130. You can reconnect your hoses as you see how they go on there. Then the next part we're going to do is put that inlet tube on and make sure you put a new gasket or make sure the gasket that's there is clean. I don't think you had to replay this place, this one, but it's okay to just make sure you just have the clean one on there. So we're just going to lubricate it as it says on the step before. Then we're going to do the same. 89 inch pounds, 45 degrees on these two bolts, one and two. 89 inch pounds, 130. We're going to get our tubing to go across here to our thermostat housing, which we're going to get that reinstalled here after we put our water pump pulley back on. Water pump pulley isn't too hard. It's going to go on there. There's only three bolts that go on there. You put them in a finger tight position first. Then after you get them in a finger tight position, you just go ahead and get your belts and everything back on there because that tension is going to help you. Once that belt's on there, we're going to go down to 18 foot pounds to get those torqued. One, two, three. So as looking at the diagram, you'll see hand tighten, finger tight, no belt. When we torque them down, you'll see the belt. Okay, so we have that installed. Now it's time to do the thermostat housing. Now the thermostat housing is going to go on. And once again, we have to lubricate the O-ring of the seal that's going to go on there. Not too much of a problem. We're just going to get it on. It's only five bolts. On the back side, there is a lubrication ring that needs to be there's a ring that needs to be lubricated right here as well as a ring here this one's more of an oil ring this one's more of a seal but we're going to get both of those lubricated so they seat good just make sure there's no dirt and debris on the mating surface or on the part itself so what we're going to do is get that all on there so what we're going to do is now go down and we're going to get it torqued down to 89 inch pounds and 45 degrees and these are the five bolts one, two, three, four, five. No crazy sequence for these. All five of them, 89, 130. And then now we have everything on the front. So it's just a matter of reconnecting all of your coolant system hoses. Get them all reconnected. And Ford did not mess up with this one. The, the hoses are all different sizes. So you don't have to worry about things going into the wrong area. And it's not like you have 15 one inch three foot hoses. So everything is short, bent in the right angles to where you're going to know where it goes. You will be obviously be able to see if there's something not plugged in. The biggest thing I will be concerned about is your electronics, not your cooling system hoses. And if you are concerned about that, go back in this video and you'll see where we took all these things apart earlier. So what we're going to do is jump to the valve covers and go ahead and get the intake and then we're done. So what we're going to be doing now is getting the simple side reinstalled. So the driver's side of the valve cover is really, really easy. What we're gonna do is just put a new gasket on. Ford recommends you change it, so we're gonna change it. Take the old one off, put the new one on. It will only go in there one way. It actually does bend to these areas here as, you, as it should. So you will know definitely if you're on the right side by these couple areas here, make sure it's not rolled or anything. Also, when you squeeze that case, you might have a little bit of RTV up here. Just put a little drop right there as well to make sure that whole area seals well. And you don't have to worry about any leaking, okay? Next, what we're gonna do is we have the 12 bolts up top and we're gonna take them down to 89 inch pounds. Crisscross pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Kind of a weird combination of them, but we're going to get those all in there installed as they should be. And then we're going to be getting our pickups, our solenoids in there. Hmm, I don't like that one. Right. 
So who doesn't like a challenge? Now what we're gonna do is get our right hand passenger side valve cover on first. It is a little bit more in detail than the other side because you have the high pressure fuel pump over there and the mechanical fuel pump. What we're gonna do is look at our cover. We will be replacing the gasket that kind of goes around it. So we're gonna take that gasket off here. We're gonna throw it out in the trash. As you see, we're gonna discard it and then we're gonna reinstall a new one. And we're gonna install a new one. It is shaped to fit in a certain way. So don't just kind of force it. Make sure everything's clean. And you are gonna put a little bit of that RTV right here on these areas at the top of the cases. Remember, when you did put it on there prior and you squeeze it, some of it bulged out. Just kind of cut that off and put a new little drop there. Do not pull it. Just slice it with a razor and put a little drop up there just to make sure everything seals up there with no problem. Then what we're gonna do is go all those bolts, all 12 of, all 12 of them are gonna go down to 89 inch pounds. So crisscross pattern, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and that's done. One of the key things before you get all that on there is just make sure you clean these out real good so nothing falls down into your holes where your spark plugs are. And I lubricated those so they slide over a little bit easier and not have any kind of problems. So these areas, one, two, three, four, five, just clean them up, put a little bit of lubrication on there, and then they'll slide on a lot easier. They were a little bit hanging in the butt to get off, so I did remember that. Then what we're gonna do, like I said, just, you're just gonna inspect these to make sure that they look good and you don't have any problems with those. Then we're gonna have our flex fuel rail. As you see, one, two, three, they kind of Christmas trees in places that they press back down on there. Then that fuel rail is going to reconnect. All right, so let's go ahead and get it installed. We have our new, we have our high pressure fuel pump sitting right here with our new bolts. Ford did recommend that we threw these are. I think these were the Torx 45 that we ended up using. So what we'll do is tighten everything down. So you install the mounting plate. Let's talk about how to install the mounting plate and how to torque it down. I did not have to reinstall the mounting plate. So what I did do was for bolts one and two, we finger tightened all the bolts that go in there. Then you tighten the bolt down one turn at a time. Then you repeat stages one and two until you reach 89 foot pounds. The reason being you go back and forth is just because that high pressure fuel pump is spring loaded, so you don't wanna do it cattywamp. You wanna kinda of go back and forth, turn, 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 back and forth. Then you'll tighten it all the way down, and once you get it down to where 89 is, you'll go an additional 45 degrees. This one back and forth, turn by turn by turn by turn until you hit 89 on each side, and then you an additional 45 degrees. Then we'll get all the attachments and everything reconnected. So right here is the fuel line that I was talking about. So the main fuel rail bolts will go in at the flare nuts to go onto the sides. So the flare nuts are the ones that are 17 millimeters. Two of those. Those will go down to 89 inch pounds. Then you'll go down to, I mean, those will go down to 62 inch pounds then 89 inch pounds and then 30 degrees. Unless you have a special tool that you can be able to use a box in on that. I just kind of tightened mine down. It was one of the things that I kind of didn't like about it, but I did do it. And then the high pressure fuel rail, the rail, these two bolts. Now this is the one I said that's hidden on the back that you won't be able to see. These gets tightened down to 89 inch pounds and then 45 degrees. These are the two that I stated in the earlier. You will not be able to see that one in the back. It's kind of hidden. So you got to reach your hand back there. After you do that, just make sure you plug your electronics up and you should be good to go. I did not disconnect the flex fuel rail. So it was already still installed. So I didn't have an issue with that. Electronic plug. And then we're good to go to the other side. So basically with the left hand or the driver's side valve cover, you don't really have any complications getting it on. It's pretty easy compared to the other side because you're not having to worry about that fuel rail and the high pressure. So what you'll do is just replace your gasket as Ford recommends. You'll throw the old one in the trash, put the new one on there that does go in in a certain way, just like the other one does. You'll replace it. You'll make sure you don't have any bulging silicone from where you closed your, case, your front cover. If you do, you'll cut that off, put a little drop of the RTV on top. Then you will be tightening these bolts down to 89 inch pounds. Once you get these bolts tightened down to 89 inch pounds, you're pretty much done with it. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. That's the sequence. And as I stated before, I did clean these to make sure they were clean and nothing was going to fall in. And I put a lubrication, a little bit of lubrication on so they slid on a little bit easier. 
Now that we have those all on, what you will do is just inspect them, make sure everything looks good, and then reconnect a couple things. And see, I didn't disconnect any of this stuff right here, so it's all still on there, which is no problem. We're gonna go through and get all of our connectors back where they should be, one, two, three, four, these two in the back, these two in the front, and these were all right here where your solenoids are gonna go. All right, getting close. Ignition coil, we'll go ahead and get those torqued down to where they should be. As you'll see right here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, V6, EcoBoost, 3.5. But we're gonna go ahead and get those torqued down to where they should be. Just take a look. These are the long cylinder things that kind of go down there and they attach to your spark plug. But we're gonna go down to 62 inch pounds and then 50 degrees. So we're gonna go a little bit past 130, but not quite two o'clock. So like that 145 mark. So we're gonna go ahead and get those torqued down and then we're good to go with that. What we're gonna do now is get our complete intake up top with the new gaskets, talk about that, and then close this out. So the final thing that you all are gonna be doing is getting the intake in. We're almost done. So as you see right here in this part of the video, it is showing that there are gaskets that Ford does recommend that you replace, throw in the trash. So these are gonna go in the trash. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and get our new ones installed. They're gonna be linked down in the description section as well. There is a torque spec that we've been using like crazy, right? So we are at 89 inch pounds along with 45 degrees is what we're gonna to be torquing down the eight bolts. So the bolts are already pre-installed. They do not really come out or anything. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So now that we have those eight bolts installed, we should be pretty much getting off to the races to where we're not going to be having to really do any torque specs. At this point, it's just reconnecting holes, reconnecting clamps. And there's a few that we just want to take a look at real quick. On this one, there is that one in the back that you need to reinstall. This is the one that I stated that I did not want to disconnect because I know with ATVs, they have like throttle position sensors and things, and those sensors are really have to be cal calibrated to certain voltages. So I didn't want to take that out. Just disconnect your plugs. Right here, there's another one. That's that little group of hoses or clamps that we took off. This one goes back in. These two go back in as they should. And remember, that slides down on. Now, just reconnect all your intake system, all your air system. I'm not going to go through all that. You all saw how we took it apart, and that's exactly how you reassemble it. All right, but if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I hope you enjoy this video and enjoy your truck. All right, so we finished the video. It took me 10 hours to do the whole install. That is including torquing everything down and recording for you all and making sure I did research in between. I did break my harmonic puller, had to go out and get another one of those, all that within 10 hours. So I started this at about 10 o'clock, finished it at about eight o'clock. So there we go. Let me just show you the difference in quality of the tools really quick, express to you all, every, everything that we use to get this apart is all you're gonna need. So I just wanted to show you all the difference in the pullers. So they look pretty much the same, however, down to quality this one's a lot heavier duty it feels heavier it weighs better the steel is just different thread wise this is where the other one failed so i got down through there and stripped the freaking threads off of it so this not this is not what i recommend is one from amazon what i recommend is this one here oem tools it is part 27 one three nine. Not sure what it's going to cost, but we're going to figure that out here in the description section, and we're good there. OEM Chrysler Harmonic Puller. So that's going to be going back. Like I said, it was seventy-five dollars plus taxes. When you return it, you get your money back. So that saved me money on it.